The former chief commissioner of the National Inquiry into Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls is calling on Ottawa to do more to convince Manitoba to search a Winnipeg landfill for the remains of two Indigenous women. It comes down to money and what money, what value are governments willing to put on the lives of these women? Let's just put politics aside and get the work done. Now, the Manitoba government has said they would not support a search of the Prairie Green landfill, prompting people to blockade the entrance of a different local landfill. Those protesters have set up a new camp next to the Canadian Museum for Human Rights. Now, a Manitoba MP has written a letter to the United Nations. She is calling for, quote, international oversight on the failure of governments to search for our stolen sisters and uphold the human rights of Indigenous women, girls, and gender-diverse people. NDP MP for Winnipeg Centre, Leah Gazan, joins me now. Hello and welcome to the show. I want to start on the comments made by Marion Buller before we get to your letter. She is calling for the federal government to, if necessary, sidestep Manitoba completely and launch the search alongside the families. I'd like to get your reaction to those comments. Well, there should never be any jurisdictional uh, barriers to Canada meeting its human rights obligations. I think we, they, the Canadian government needs to support a humanitarian recovery immediately and uh, urge the province uh, uh, to, to uh, meet these human rights obligations that Canada has signed on to. Now, you mentioned this kind of game of jurisdictional ping pong that appears to be being played. The standoff does seem to be between the province of Manitoba and the federal government. Minister Mark Miller says Manitoba's decision not to search the landfill is quote-unquote heartless, but the federal government isn't prepared to spearhead the search without the province on board. So where does that leave the families of the victims in all this? Well, Canada has international legal obligations, uh, quite frankly. Uh, there should be no jur jurisdictional uh, disputes. Uh, Canada uh, is obliged uh, to follow international human rights law. I'm urging uh, the, the Canadian government to certainly do that and work with the province uh, to meet these obligations. Uh, this is not a choice. Uh, they must immediately start a humanitarian recovery and they must abide by international human rights law, full stop. Uh, the fact that there's a jurisdictional debates or jurisdictional bantering that, uh, you know, former uh, commissioner uh, chief or lit head commissioner Miriam Buller alluded to in her statement, I fully agree. Uh, jurisdictional games need to end and people need to follow uh, human rights law. Mm -hmm. Well, on that note, you are calling for international oversight on this case. What prompted you to go international now, and what would that look like in practice? Well, I think it's important to note that I did put in a submission to the Special Rapporteur on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples uh, in February. Uh, in fact, uh, this is a follow-up from my original submission uh, in February. It's clear from the current decisions, the current handling uh, of the crisis, that all levels of government uh, have had issue in terms of meeting their uh, uh, human rights obligations. Uh, Canada, as the government, uh, certainly the government of the day, has an obligation for Canada to uh, uphold uh, the human rights of all peoples, uh, and they must encourage the province to do the same. Uh, the excuses, the jurisdictional excuses that continue on uh, because there seems to be a reluctance really urged me, uh, along with advocates, uh, with the support of families to involve the international community. It is so unfortunate and is, from my opinion, such a grotesque practice that we've normalized the genocide of murdered and missing Indigenous women and girls, two-spirit and diverse gendered folks to the point that we are actually dumping garbage on the human remains of loved ones. That is so violent, especially for women who never had their human rights honored in life. If and when this issue does get brought before the United Nations, how do you think it will reflect on Canada's reputation? Well, I think Canada likes to see itself as a beacon uh, of human rights globally, and certainly this does not look good uh, on Canada in terms of its constant constant stalling on addressing 
uh, the national uh, emergency, something that all members of parliament uh, voted unanimously as a Canada-wide emergency. The fact that the National Inquiry into Murdered and Missing Indigenous Women and Girls came out over four years ago. The government now has only responded to two calls uh, for justice. Meanwhile, the current Prime Minister has called this an ongoing genocide. I don't think this looks good on Canada at all. And, you know, I, I've been totally, totally um, inspired by uh, Indigenous and non-Indigenous people uh, throughout uh, Canada and even globally who are coming forward and saying this is unacceptable. Uh, we must do a humanitarian search. These women uh, who, uh, who are suspected uh, to be in the landfills deserve to be laid to rest in dignity. Families deserve justice and we must immediately address this crisis of violence against Indigenous women and girls. Um, to spirit and gender diverse folks. Mm -hmm. Well, it certainly is striking to me, at least, that you, a member of the federal par parliament, feel like you have to go international to get the oversight on this issue you feel it deserves. However, here at home, your party does have an agreement with the Liberals that keeps them in power until 2025. Action on missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls is part of that agreement. In your opinion, how are the Liberals doing holding up their end of that deal? Well, I think that I would give them a failing grade. The fact that, you know, the National Inquiry came out a uh, little over four years ago now, they've responded to two calls for justice. You know, they put in place uh, funding in 2020, 724.1 million that they've been sitting on. They've uh, spent less than 20% of it. It's now 2023. So I would give them a failing grade. I think we need to start with excuses. I think we need to start with jurisdictional excuses that the federal government, along with all levels of government, need to address this crisis. This is an ongoing genocide. The minister has acknowledged Winnipeg as ground zero. We need help. We are valuable. Our loved ones matter. And all levels of government need to act. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you mentioned that you would give them a failing grade, but I, I believe you, you must have some leverage under this agreement. Uh, so what steps would you like to see the provincial and federal governments take now to respond to this? Well, you know, I've certainly put out, uh, uh, certainly my report to the Special Rapporteur. Uh, I have to say, you know, I have, I do regularly uh, uh, speak uh, with uh, the minister, uh, raising concerns uh, coming from from the community. Uh, and let's let's be let's let's be honest. I mean, it's a confidence and supply uh, uh, agreement. We have been able to push things. Uh, certainly, the red dress alert uh, being in this uh, budget uh, is helpful, but that does not uh, certainly. Uh, give the government a pass uh, on their failure to address this ongoing crisis. As a critic in the opposition, as, as the NDP uh, spokesperson uh, to deal with the issue of murdered and missing Indigenous women and girls, two-spirited and diverse gendered folks, I will continue to push hard on this government to uphold human rights, to uphold uh, their human rights obligations, and finally address this ongoing genocide. Okay, I think that's a good place to leave it. Leah Gazan is the NDP MP for Winnipeg Centre. It's a difficult subject, so thank you for your time. Thank you so much for having me, Brett.